A gym teacher in New Jersey is in big trouble. She's accused of sexually assaulting a boy starting when he was either 14 or 15 and then going into his senior year. Lydia Pinto worked at Bridgewater Raritan School District. Police in Somerset County say they got a tip last month that Pinto had had a relationship with a former student. Police say the now adult man was interviewed and said the relationship started, as I said, when he was either 14 or 15. Pinto is out of jail on bail. Along with teaching gym and coaching, Pinto taught driver's ed. According to the school's Facebook page, she is no longer listed as a teacher on the school's website. And in a suburb of Austin, Texas, a 24-year-old former teacher also faces sex charges heading into the holidays. Shawnee Despain was indicted on charges of having an improper relationship with a student and possessing child pornography. The student involved is 17. Local media reports that Despain resigned from the Rockdale Independent School District in September. I'm Anjanette Levy and it's Wednesday. Welcome to Crime Fix. A California man who cut off a woman's head with a samurai sword in the middle of a street has been convicted of her murder. 33-year-old Jose Rafael Solano Landeta killed 27-year-old Karina Castro in September of 2022. Castro was the mother of Solano's children. Solano never denied what he did, but said it was self-defense. He claims Castro was coming at him with a knife, so he swung that sword at her. But the prosecution says Solano planned the murder, even calling out sick from work so he could go home and get the sword before meeting up with Castro. The convicted killer faces 26 years to life in prison at sentencing. We have some news out of South Carolina's Low Country now. That's where Alec Murdoch was tried and convicted of killing his wife earlier this year. Well, Murdoch is now accusing the clerk of court, Becky Hill, of tampering with the jury. Now her son, Jeff Colt Hill, who was the IT director for the county, has been charged with wiretapping. And last night, sled agents seized Becky Hill's cell phone according to Will Folks of Fitz News. We don't know at all whether or not it's tied in any way, shape or form to the, the Murdoch case. Uh, this news outlet reported earlier this month that there was a sled investigation into Colt Hill, uh, the son of Calden County Clerk of Court, Becky Hill. Uh, at the time we were informed that it was tied to some eavesdropping allegations. Um, again, don't know what those entail, don't know who Mr. Hill is alleged to have eavesdropped on. Now, it's important to note that Becky Hill has denied these jury tampering allegations, but Murdoch's lawyers say that she did it. And right now, it's not clear why sled agents seized her cell phone related to this investigation into her son and wiretapping. Jeff Hill appeared for a hearing at the Culleton County Jail this morning, but get this, the media was shut out of the hearing and that's unheard of. A warrant for Colt Hill's arrest says he's accused of using his work computer in Colleton County to record a phone call between two people in July of this year. We are still waiting on law enforcement to provide us with the probable cause affidavit for his arrest with the warrant. Obviously, no media were allowed into the bond hearing this morning in Colleton County, which is troubling. Uh, so there's a, a shroud of secrecy over this arrest. I requested Colt Hill's personnel file back in September, and we received it earlier this month, and there was absolutely no mention of the eavesdropping allegations in that file. Folks says Jeff Hill was suspended with pay for a week related to similar allegations. And I'm told this is a public corruption investigation that is active and ongoing, so stay tuned. Deputies in Florida believe a violent road rage incident all started because of a cup of coffee at a Chick-fil-A. On Saturday morning, Donovan Robert Matthews apparently got into an argument with a man and a woman at a Chick-fil-A location, and one of those people apparently threw cold coffee at Matthews. Deputies say Matthews then followed the pair in his car, hitting their pickup truck with his SUV. Then everyone got out, and there was a big brawl in the street, and the woman even waved a rifle around in the air. Can you believe that? Matthews was arrested and charged with aggravated battery, simple assault, simple battery, and criminal mischief. Authorities say charges against the person who allegedly threw the coffee are still pending. Another wild story out of Flagler County, Florida. A man's plan to swim through a canal to get away from police didn't exactly work out for him. Hey, there's people right there. There's cops there and there. What are you doing? Dude, what are you doing this for? Police say Philip McGraw got into a fight with his neighbor, going into the man's garage and punching him in the face. 
That fight carried over into the street before McGraw eventually got into a car with his stepfather. Flagler County deputies tried to stop the men, but the car took off, eventually ending up back at McGraw's house. McGraw ran away, jumping into a canal. Deputies say he swam through multiple canals, trying to avoid arrest. Instead, he just ended up going to jail, soaking wet. Body cameras were recording as police in Beaver Creek, Ohio, ran into a Walmart after a man started shooting there Tuesday night. Take a look. Where's he at? What's he look like? Officers walked through the store with assault-style rifles, but police say by that time, the shooter, 20-year-old Benjamin Jones, had turned the gun on himself, dying by suicide. Jones is from nearby Dayton, Ohio. Four people were wounded. At last check, three of them were considered stable, and one victim was in critical condition, but also stable. Police say all of the victims were shoppers. The FBI is asking that anyone with information about Benjamin Jones contact them. A woman from Louisiana is going to prison for a very long time for her part in stuffing the body of a five-year-old little boy in a Las Vegas-themed suitcase after he'd been killed. A mushroom hunter in southern Indiana found little Cairo Jordan's body in the hard shell suitcase that was marked to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Indiana State Police say Cairo's body was inside and that he did not have any obvious signs of trauma. Don Coleman, who's from Louisiana, told police that she found Cairo's mother in a bedroom of a home that they all shared, and that Cairo's mom, Dewan Anderson, was sitting on him, and it was, quote, already done. Holman, according to records, then helped place Cairo's body in the suitcase. She's going to prison for 25 years. Police are still looking for Cairo's mom. In the days before Cairo died, court documents say that Cairo's mom wrote on Facebook about exorcism and a demonic force within her son. If you know where Dewan Anderson is, call police. Several suspects in a brutal crime in Louisiana are getting reduced criminal charges. Three of four teenagers involved in a deadly carjacking are pleading guilty to attempted manslaughter after they tried to steal Linda Fricky's car in New Orleans last year. The 73-year-old grandmother got tangled in the seatbelt and as the teens took off in her SUV, she was dragged down the road. Her arm was severed and she died in the street. Each of the teens will spend 20 years in prison. The fourth person allegedly involved, 18-year-old John Honor, is charged with second-degree murder. His trial is expected to start next week. Prosecutors say he was the one behind the wheel when Fricky died. If convicted, he could get life in prison. A former mayor in Maryland has been sentenced to more than a century behind bars for possessing and distributing child porn. A judge ordered Patrick Wojan to spend 150 years in prison after he pleaded guilty to 60 counts of distribution, 40 counts of possession, and 40 counts of possession with intent to distribute child sex abuse material. Wojan is the former mayor of College Park, Maryland. He resigned after he got arrested in March. Authorities say there were hundreds of different child victims being sexually abused in the material that they found on the former mayor's devices, including abuse of infants. Can you imagine? Several of the victims were identified and even wrote victim impact statements, which prosecutors read into the record. Now to a horrific case out of Ohio, where a man is accused of the premeditated murders of his three young sons. He appeared in court this week for a number of motions filed by his attorneys. Chad Dorman is accused of lining up his three little boys, Clayton, Hunter, and Chase, at their house and shooting each with a rifle. They were so young, they were only seven, four, and three, and they had absolutely no way to defend themselves. One of the boys tried to escape by running into a field, but Dorman is accused of running that boy down, hunting him down, as he said, bringing him back to the house and shooting him. Dorman told detectives he had been planning the crime for months. Sheriff's deputies in Claremont County, which is east of Cincinnati, found Dorman sitting on his front steps. Can I roll over? I ain't gonna hurt you. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hurt nobody. You got anything on you? No, I ain't got nothing, man. Phone, that's it. The county's prosecutor has made it clear he will not settle for anything less than the death penalty in this case. I can't go into a whole lot of facts, all right, because this is a death penalty case, and my goal is to have this man executed 
for slaughtering these three little boys. In court Monday, a number of motions filed by Dorman's lawyers were discussed, including whether Dorman should have to wear handcuffs and shackles in court. The judge said Dorman, from what he has heard, has been a model inmate at the jail. Dorman would like convicted felons to be allowed on his jury, and he wants the judge to limit graphic photos those jurors will see. Dorman's trial is scheduled for July of next year. Well, tomorrow, Thanksgiving Day, marks 60 years since President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in front of a large crowd in Dallas, Texas. Now one of the Secret Service agents who was there has written a new book about it, and he says he's open to the idea that more than one person was involved in the murder. The famous Zapruder film captured JFK's motorcade driving through Dealey Plaza on that beautiful fall day as the president was shot. Here's part of Paul Landis's account of what happened. There were, there were three shots that I heard. Um, the first shot, I did not realize he'd been hit. I saw him leaning to the left uh, towards Mrs. Kennedy and he's raising his arms. And uh, I thought he was turning to see where the first shot came from or where the noise was from. Um, and then there was shortly after that a second shot and I saw no no commotion, movement or anything in the uh, president's limousine. And I thought that shot might have missed and I'm just thinking, you know, we gotta hurry, get out of there, get out of there. And then uh, that was followed by uh, the third shot. Lee Harvey Oswald was later arrested, accused of being the lone gunman but he was murdered days later by Jack Ruby. The assassination has spawned conspiracy theories for decades. This is what Landis had to say about the lone shooter theory. I accepted at the time that uh, Oswald was the lone shooter. Um, whatever evidence I had heard, uh, you know, we'll be finding the cart cart three cartridge cases and with his rifle and the school book depository, but you know, it, there, there's so much that people don't know. Um, I mean, at this point, I, I, I'm comfortable with, but I'm also open to, I mean, whatever uh, may come of this. Landis's book is entitled The Final Witness. He now lives in a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. And that's it for Crime Fix for this Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. I'm Anjanette Levy. Thanks so much for being with us. Have a great holiday weekend. We'll see you back here tomorrow.